nervous today than normal? All right. So I am the director of the State Prep School Program here for the Treasure Valley. I am based at the YMCA downtown branch, downtown Boise branch, and we work in the schools across the valley. So uh, I spent the last couple of years with my team over here in CUNA, actually working in elementary school levels, teaching the students how to move about safely. And <coughs> we all know that they don't always move about safely. <laughs> I don't require cell phones to be turned off during my presentation, just so you know, you're okay, it's fine. So, uh, we try to teach them how to cross the road safely, if they're riding bicycles, if they're on their skateboards, uh, ripsticks, scooters, all the things that, that students ride these days that can get to school by other transportation, we try to keep them safe. We know that you see them out there, and we know that you see them doing certain actions out there that put us all in a little bit of fear and put everybody at risk, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so what I wanted to do is present to you today a partial, what we do with our kids, but also what we do when we're teaching driver's ed. And just to give us all a reminder of what bicycle and pedestrian laws are and what some of the students that are probably, I don't know how young they're walking over here, but some parents let their kids walk when they're in kindergarten. And those kids have real special needs because they don't understand risk and there's no amount of safety officer Brady talk that they could ever get that they would ever understand. So we have to work with them pretty carefully. So I wanted to just to say that it could be way worse. You probably saw the slide when I was running it in my pocket that we could be pedaling bikes, buses to school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Isn't that kind of fun? Uh, but also that would suck. <laughs> and it's not reasonable in a rural school district at all. Okay, I grew up in Morfino. Um, my bus ride was 10 miles, and we were on a bus more than an hour every day. And I rode through 12th grade. And that was a point of pride at a certain time when I was in 11th grade. I'm going to make it to my senior year to the last day on the school bus. And I will say that your job is harder than anybody realized this how you have to keep kids safe. The lack of understanding that we have out on multi-lane roads, uh, for people stopping for your stop signs, all of the things that go into keeping the kids safe, I just want to say from my heart and from my safety bus and committee standpoint, thank you. We couldn't do school without you. Because I try to remind teachers too that if we don't get kids to school safely, by whatever means they do, there's no point in even teaching them at all because they're not going to make it. So uh, driver's ed, just remember for all of you, because I know you took driver's ed exams last year probably, uh, or you took it sometime within recent history because you're bus drivers. All people are required to use due care when they're out there on the road. This is really bicycle and pedestrian specific, but it stands for everybody to exercise the caution that's needed to make us all successful. If you can't see my presentation, feel free to move to the back. I'll take as much or little time as you want me to. Uh, you don't have to read all this, but it just reminds us that do the right thing out there and we'll be successful. <coughs> visibility for all of us is very difficult. As we become more mature in our lifetime, our vision changes. Okay? I worked for I care for 20 years. I am not lying to you. I know this. Okay? Our vision changes, but students don't have a perception of that. They think, I see you. You see me too. Right? That's their whole thing. That's this kid over here in the bushes. He sees you coming. Don't you see him too? No, you really don't. When we work in neighborhoods that are long established or we work on roads that have big bushes around fence lines, um, I know we have a huge old wild rose at my parents' house, and it's really blocks the whole driveway. Okay? So it's a different situation, but we still have to think, what's our environment look like? Those kids are thinking you can see them, but you can't. Uh, a lot of kids are wearing dark colors. I have to wear uh, a black uniform for the Y, and some days I dress in all black just because we're talking to kids where we're wearing all black. What could we do different? Okay. Uh, do you have to wear safety vests as bus drivers? No. Okay. All right. Do you ever have to put chains on your buses? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember a bus here out there, you had to put chains on. We all knew how to do it. All the kids did that lived up on the top of the hill. <laughs> okay. It can get pretty interesting. When we're out in our environment, this guy here is 
wearing that urban camouflage. He's wearing all gray on a gray street on a gray day, probably somewhere in Seattle. Really hard to see this guy. He probably doesn't understand that. None of us understand that. I put on what I put on, I go out, I see you, you see me, we all get along like a happy family, but it's not really true. So he is using a technique we call the lead and peek. And you learned this probably when you were little kids, where you look to the left, and you look to the right, and you look to the left again, right? It serves you throughout your whole lifetime, whether you recognize it or not. This is what we teach the little kids. Just be seen. Can we get students to wear things like this? No. When you're picking up somebody out on a rural road, they're standing in the rain. It's a dark roadway anyway, maybe it's dirt. Who knows what's going on out there? Can you really see them? Do you expect them to be there? But you can't. Hyper-awareness is what we all practice, but not every driver out there does that. And you're being passed by people, even on small roads, doing some pretty crazy stuff. What we try to encourage our students to do is just think about it for the trip to the bus or the trip to the school, to put on a little something extra flashy, to encourage parents and grandparents to give their child or their grandchild a safety vest for Christmas instead of a candy cane. Something funny, but reasonable. We're working on the kids to do that. How can we help parents get to that place too? Bicyclists are required to have lights on their bicycles by law in all 50 states and around the whole world. <coughs> okay. I have a person who, yeah, no kidding. Bike, it's just like a car. A bicycle is considered a vehicle in the state of Idaho. It's under the same provisions of law, except for those that cannot pertain to it, like a, what your engine speed is, or electric blinker systems, or other things about vehicles, like horns. Um, and then there's that funny little thing called the stop law, and we'll get to that here. <coughs> it's very important to remember and to share the knowledge that we have to have lights on our bicycles at night time. If I, does anybody ride a bike in here sometimes? Ever ride a bike? <laughs> okay, sometimes you're out there riding a bike. And it's again that thing, well, I could see. I'm sure you could see me. I'm out here moving. Never mind that I'm wearing all black, or never mind that I'm riding on the wrong side of the road, or all those things. So. If we can help our students, we have lights that we can give out uh, if you know people that are biking. We bring them with us every time we present in CUNA. We bring bike lights for the kids. <coughs> and then we remind them that they take batteries and teach them how to open something and put the battery in and teach them how a battery actually works. I've been at junior high, uh, well, I graduated junior high a long time ago, but uh, <laughs> yesterday I was in junior high. And uh, one gal said, well, my, my lights stopped working, so I, I just figured, oh, well. Why did they stop working? I'm not really sure, but they just stopped. And, you know, we don't think about how they don't know that. It's easy to take the battery, but they don't understand that. How can we help them get there? So remember that. That's another great Christmas gift idea. It doesn't have to be expensive. It could be a dollar store flashlight taped on our handlebars, but it'll help you see them better when they're coming at you, okay? Uh, and that's the state law. I just give you these things. This again, driver's ed. You don't have to read it, but 49.723 says lights are required on your bicycle at nighttime. It also is really specific. It says it only needs a bike only needs a, a red rear reflector. You spend a lot of time out on the road. Is a red rear reflector on a bike enough? No. I think we need a law change on this one. So it requires cyclists to have a blinking light or a red light on the back of the of the bike. All right. Uh, we talk about predictability. When kids jump out from the side of the road, that is unexpected. It's very surprising and not very pleasant. Uh, we try to get kids to know the law. We want everyone to know the law and to follow the law. If we didn't have traffic law, what would happen? Chaos. Chaos, my favorite word, chaos. When we do bicycle rodeos, we have a little circle of chaos. And we don't have any rules in the circle of chaos. You can go any direction you want, do anything you want. And within about three minutes to four minutes, it works out how the pattern should go. They're yielding to each other. They're watching out. It's really a curious thing. But law is there to protect all of us on our roadways. If we didn't have stop sign law, I can't imagine what's going on. Okay? We know the law. We follow the law. We never assume people's actions. We as drivers never assume that the kids are even going to understand what a crosswalk, how to move it. 
much less. We have so many schools just right in your real close vicinity. And we spend all of our time when we're over here, we're usually over here for multiple days <coughs> all day long. So we walk or drive or ride around the city and just figure out what's going on, talk to kids about what their experiences are. And there's a lot of assumptions out there, even on my own part. I'll even assume that you'll understand or want to listen to me for this whole presentation. <laughs> All right, we communicate our intentions. You turn on your stop lights, your flashlights. Um, people turn on their blinkers, hopefully. People use their hand signals. Are the kids letting you know what they're doing? Okay. How many people see a bicyclist or a walker or skater on the way to work, on the way into school? Everybody sees them, right? Yeah. And jaywalking, probably, okay. And do you see it more at the junior high, high school, or elementary? Is it everybody? Okay. It's everybody. It takes all of us to get that change. Um, I don't. We'll talk about that later. But we'll also expect unsafe road conditions. Right now, leaves are out there on the roads. They're slick, just like ice when they're wet. And those kids that are riding on them or walking on them, the chances of them falling are exponentially higher than they normally would be. So here's a great question, especially where we don't have any sidewalks. Where should people walk when there aren't any sidewalks? What side should they walk on? Anybody? Facing traffic. Facing traffic. Right. In the ditch. In the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always pleasant when they get to school, but they had a lot of fun on the way in. We, yes, always walking facing traffic if there are no sidewalks. Very important. Another very important point of order is, and what we teach our students is that if my house is over here on this side of the road and school or the store is right up here and it's not a very far distance, will I actually cross where it's unmarked, walk up to walk facing traffic to cross again to get to the school? I wouldn't. Because the risk of crossing once and crossing twice is it's higher for them to be hit. A lack of understanding to cross the road. Maybe they, they cross and you just didn't see them. Because let's face it, sometimes we just don't see somebody, right? I pulled out in front of somebody a couple days ago. I take driving tests all the time and we teach law all the time and I pulled out in front of somebody. It happens to everybody. Okay. Yeah, it's awful. All right, so let's remember, we don't always encourage unsafe crossing just to do an action. Okay? We don't take an unsafe action just to follow the law. It's very important to remember. And I have a slide that really hits that home for all of us. Uh, are they painting any of these green things here yet? You have the new traffic circle. Okay. Uh, anybody come to Boise ever or go into any other cities where you see this green stuff on the roads? Emerald has it um, coming into Meridian, too. There's some places out in Meridian that have it. But they're painting the, some of the lanes green where there's high... Uh, volume or potential high volume for bicycles and highlighting the area where you shouldn't drive. Just letting you know there's bicyclists probably going to come through there. But depending on the day, there's more times than others, just like morning commute traffic. Okay. Uh, downtown Boise Capitol Boulevard right now looks kind of like this, uh, not looking very well because it's a massive construction zone, so I won't really go into it other than to say that this is a stop box and it puts at a red light, it puts all the cyclists filtering forward into that stop box so that they go out before all the rest of the traffic goes and goes, they go back into the lane. <coughs> okay. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, did ITD reach out to you and talk to you about this or ACHD? A little bit. If you decided to open the email, look at the letter, or uh, go online, maybe you might have learned about this. <coughs> but there are new road treatments out there that we're not learning about. We don't go through driver's ed of the year. <coughs> yeah, they, they don't. They just updated the manual with all this stuff just July. Okay, mm -hmm. pretty interesting read if you're into traffic nerdness. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so remember that if you see the green lane, that is a, an area where you'll see bicyclists. And this stuff, uh, as the streets clear up in downtown Boise, it's actually not horrible to go through there. And that's from the perspective of we know where the bicyclists are going to actually be. 
they right now will probably be out in the middle of the lane because the whole bike lane in that area is shut down, so they're going to be riding out in the middle. When it works, we have a place for everybody. People are walking on the sidewalk, people are in their bike lane, and people are traveling in the car lane. If there isn't a bike lane, the bikes might be in the car lane, or they might be on the sidewalk, and nobody wants them anywhere. Hasn't seen anybody seen the, the shared lane marking, the share arrow, share arrow. That's letting us off, yeah? <laughs> the share arrow, share arrow. We just made that up a couple days ago. <laughs> so, but it is really called a share arrow. This is an interesting traffic uh, notification, letting us know that bicycles will be in the lane. It's usually combined with a bicycles may use full lane sign somewhere in this area. It's very specific. So if the road's too narrow, the share people riding side by side or driving and biking or skating or whatever <coughs> side by side, they'll put that out there to warn drivers and warn bicyclists this is where we are going to see bikes. And you think about it, this person's out here riding in the middle of the road, the person that's over, oh hello kitty, all right, <laughs> really? <laughs> Not touching anything. That intersection up there, if uh, there's a left or right turning driver, they're looking this way and they see that bicyclist out there. If they're stuffed up against this little car here, the chances of you really seeing them, especially if they're wearing a dark color, you might see them. Maybe. Okay? So it's given better visibility to warn people <coughs> there's going to be a bike out in the lane. Not very comfortable for people who don't know how to use that. Would you feel comfortable riding out in the middle of the road if we all decided, hey, let's go for a bike ride today? It feels pretty awkward, right? Right? And also, an yeah, well, you might be going 10. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick of today is that uh, people have electric assist on their bicycles and their scooters and their skateboards, and they're going faster. So you may be looking at a, uh, a bicyclist going along the side of the road and suddenly realize, my gosh, I think they might be going 25 miles an hour because you can't pass them. And they've got an electric assist on, assist on there. And maybe it's a lady with two kids sitting on the back and you're wondering what in the actual world is going on here, okay? So some of the, this is things that we have to pay attention to, that the technology for bicycles <coughs> is changing too, and scooters and skateboards. The kids rolling in on these uh, electric scooters now, they're riding on the sidewalks with you walking, and it's putting you at risk, okay? Again, <coughs> We want kids to ride, and we want everybody to ride in a straight line. When you start popping in and out of cars, you're in and out of vision. And if uh, we're in an area, I don't have my cell phone right here on me, but if we're in a place where it's people are walking or driving, and they're in and out, in and out, you look down at your phone, you look up, oh, they're there, or you look down again, oh, they're gone, and you accelerate. Right here is an impact point that we don't think about. And if a person just pops right back out there, you probably, a good driver, will veer away from them, but it's a sudden action and could cause a head-on collision if somebody else on the other side isn't paying attention. And what we're <coughs> seeing probably out there right now is a failure to yield to oncoming traffic when there's something in the road obstructing, right? <coughs> you drive all the time, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right? So remember that. If you are riding a bike or watching somebody ride a bike, be cognizant of that. Uh, and this is just talking position on highway. We are required to ride on the right-hand side of the road as bicyclists, unless it's a two- or one-way street, and then we'll ride. We could ride on either side of the road. The law is really specific about riding far to the right. When we put somebody far to the right, how well do we see them? And I want you to think about it from the perspective of there's a pedestrian standing right there on the corner waiting to cross the crosswalk. You have a bicyclist right there in that little corner too. Do you really see them? They blend in really well. So as far to the right as practicable means as far to the right is actually safe. And safe means visible. I want to give you a chance to see me. If I'm riding in front of you, I'm going to be looking for you. Um, can I communicate with you a little bit? Like I'm just over here and make my way through. 
until it's safe to let you go by if it's really narrow. Okay. This one gets us really in a lot of trouble with the police. A lot of police don't understand. A lot of people don't understand. We see these when we're driving through the towns as dashes. And you know what that means? It's a mixing zone where you're allowed to drive into the bike lane. And the bike lane's not a parking zone, but a lot of people do treat it as a parking zone. It's just extra space on the road. Maybe you don't see any bikers there. It's kind of like parking in the middle of the road. So when we come into these areas, it's usually at an intersection. And one of the things that it also lets the cyclists know is that they need to come out of that area to move straight through to be safe and to be seen, to prevent any right turns across their path. If anybody's ever ridden a bicycle and had a car turn right in front of them, has anybody ever had that happen? Okay, it's very scary. It's, uh, the number two way in which cyclists are injured or killed on the roadway is that right turn right in front of a bicyclist. And I'll go backwards and remind you about the electric bikes. Those people are going faster out there. Lynn, you get some really crazy road cyclists out here. I don't ride a road bike. I ride for transportation. So I'm like a little safety zoo out there, just riding along. But you get some fast riders out here. They might be going 30 miles an hour on their bikes. They may be going 60 coming down some of the hills, dropping into Lake Lowell out there. That is a, they are going fast. They also have a speed limit, which is the same as the road. So that's what I'm talking about here on this slide. If you can see it, the right hook, left cross. When a cyclist is all the way over here on the right-hand side, there's a confusing <coughs> message going on. Are you going to the right or are you going straight? What are you doing? Your arms aren't doing anything. I don't know what you're doing. I think I could beat you to the corner. So you zoom around, <coughs> and then you get an impact, right? And the cyclists, if they're savvy enough, they'll put the brakes on or they'll do an emergency reaction. But if it's somebody who doesn't understand, maybe they have their head down. And we watch the little kids riding their bikes. They do their bike riding like this. <coughs> they're kind of looking around, but they're not, they're not head in the game right here. We have to be. It's better to wait and then go. If I'm out here in the middle of the road, is there any question what I'm actually doing? Maybe that I'm out in the middle of the road. What are you doing out there? Uh, but actually going straight through the intersection and moving through there to prevent a right turn from happening in front of me and also from this left turning vehicle. We've all seen the places where it says no passing to the right or don't, don't uh, pass anybody on the right. And that's because when we drive to the right, we don't put our signal on. The person here who's waiting to turn left and the person here who's waiting to turn left, they're communicating with each other. They're first in line. And they may decide, we're both going to make that left turn at the same time. But you're like, yeah, I'm going to go around because I'm tired of waiting. This just happened in Boise a couple of weeks ago. And the person who went around drove through the crosswalk in the bike lane and drove straight into a bicyclist. And the little girl was in my class about this far away from me a couple weeks later. And she was okay because she said, my backpack's giant. So I ran into my backpack. <laughs> so like, Man, you have a good attitude about that. <laughs> Pretty scary situation for this person, you know, and for us as drivers, too. We get frustrated. I get it. So we do encourage students to make clear movements on the roadway. When we see a bicyclist in front of us out in that lane, no, there is an action happening. Something's going on. Skateboarders might do this very same thing. And we talk a lot to the skateboarders. We think they're kind of crazy, right? But it's also their transportation. They might not be able to afford a bike. Their parents might not take them to school. That's their wheels. I won't go through this, but just letting you know that left turns on bicycles are complicated. They can be two-step processes using crosswalks, acting as a pedestrian, or the cyclist may come out into the roadway and make a left turn as a vehicle. When they're doing that, they should be scanning over their shoulder using their turn signal, giving your attention, not pulling out in front of you, assuming that you'll stop. Okay. Complicated stuff. If you want to know more about that, we teach long lessons on this. You might think this is long. We have eight hours and 36 hour classes on this stuff. So this is a brief overview, but a, re a reminder. I use this pretty specifically. I left this in, even though I'm out here in CUNA, put up Boise City Code for a reason. So Boise City Code, Standpoint City Code, Idaho Falls City Code, 
Idaho code, how do we follow code when it's not uniform? So the uniform code of bike lane is required to be used unless there's something wrong with it for Boise code specific. Idaho code says that a bicyclist is stated to ride a bike lane here, they can ride in it, but they might not have to ride in it. There's not a lot out in the general state. They're usually in urban centers or on weird roads where ACHD decided to put one in. So this is really something I want to just point out that different cities have different codes related to pedestrians and bicycles and it, it pays to know it. If you move into a city and you've got an active group in there trying to change some kind of code, maybe to outlaw bikes or do something different, be aware of that, okay? People will be out of their bike lanes because of hazards. There could be uh, sand and gravel, especially out here on uh, Meridian Road, Keenum, Keenum Road, the whole thing. That's a huge shoulder out there full of all kinds of stuff, usually left gloves and dead squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever came to it out there, there are so many gloves. There's a glove uh, somewhere. I just walked by one not very long ago. Uh, door zones, uh, bike lanes. If they're built out there and there's parking next to them, most of them are doors on bike lanes where we have a tendency to ride closer to the parked vehicle. But what danger does the parked vehicle present to you? The door opens. And what happens when the door hits somebody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both people got to go to the body shop. <laughs> if they're lucky. Uh, you know, you're not coming in to visit to have coffee. You might go through the window. And, uh, sometimes we tell people, aim, if this happens, aim for the center of where the door is, where the hinge is. Yeah, no kidding. Because it's <coughs> an angle. You hit flat, bounce you back, and bounce you out on the road. This is how cyclists truly die. Uh, we had one in Fort Collins just a few months ago. The cyclist hit the door out into the road, the driver decided he never had a chance and ran the person over. We don't want that to happen, right? <coughs> Pretty significant injury to everybody. Your psychological injury is difficult. Difficult. So we're reminding cyclists, you know, stay away from that parked car because the driver in the moving vehicle have to pay attention to the roadway. If you're out here, they see you as a danger. <coughs> they want to get away from you. They want to ride away from you stay away from those parked cars, especially adults. If you're riding in a downtown area, get away from those people. Because you know what happens is they get in the car, you get in your car, you get out of your car, you kick the door open, I do it all the time, and then you look. State code requires you to look over your shoulder before you get out of the car, make sure the way is clear, and then open your door. But we really don't do that because we're so used to being in our car. So we kick our door open like, oh, I'm so hungry, i got to get pizza, i got to text my friend. Oh God, that bicyclist, I just knocked him out. Or pet, or who knows, skateboarder. You know, it could be anybody. And so, one of the things we talk about is the Dutch reach. If you think about it, open your door with your right hand. There's two things that happen. You're forced to look over your shoulder to see if anybody's there. And you're also getting a nice stretch on the back of your shoulder. Okay. So a little in-car yoga, never hurt anybody. People will be out of those bike lanes too with the grates. A great stops you and throws you over the handlebars. It's a good idea to wear a helmet. Uh, it's a good idea to wear a helmet. Narrow bike lanes are all over the place. So just give you a couple of examples. This person, this is not a bike lane. These are driveways that are partially paved. The seam is all the way down there, and the longitudinal <coughs> crack in the road can catch the wheel and throw the bicyclist one way or the other. And we don't want people taking a crash in front of us either. And then this is a picture of Hill Road in Boise over by Gary Lane. And right here is a normal bike lane. It's marked like a bike lane. And then you can kind of see it's pinching off a little bit up there, but it pinches off to 19 inches. Just going to let you know my whole body's wider than 19 inches. And a child's handlebars on their bike are about 19 inches wide. So this, when we see this, we expect the bicyclist to be in the lane, right? But do we expect them to be in a little 19-inch area? We don't even think about it. It's your bike lane, but it's not a bike lane. You can't pass them. You can't pass them that way. Um, coming into some of my final slides, which is good, uh, single file. 
The law is really specific that you can ride double on a bicycle, but you need to fall into single file when vehicle traffic is behind you. You can come back out into double and then go back into single. Notice I keep saying double. It's not quadruple or triple or quintuple or whatever we're having out here. I mean, we have some uh, cyclists out there that are riding four or five abreast, correct? Mm -hmm. We're trying to reach those people, I want you to know. We're really trying. But that law, the law is very specific. This is probably a special event, so there's probably some kind of warning system, but it's still, the messaging is there. You're taking up the whole road, okay? So that's just the law, riding two abreast. It's there, 49718. You don't have to make a note of it. This is the slide also that's a Boise City Code, and one that uh, we had the honor of talking to 500 driver's ed instructors in the last year about teaching bicycle and pedestrian safety to the driver's ed students. So this picture is kind of hard to see. It's a little bit dark, but we have a cyclist here. We have no shoulder. It's a regular old two-lane road. He's on the yeah, probably so. Okay. <laughs> and you have driveways up here. You've got anything going on. And the truck is passing the cyclist. And the cyclist is all of us. You know, and the driver is all of us. And I had a driver's ed teacher tell me, and I'm this is what motivates me to teach all the time. The driver's ed teacher said, I'm not going to list, risk the life of many to save the life of one. What's the very first thing? you do when you come up to an obstruction in the road. Slow down. I still, yeah. We could be a million things. Farm implement, yeah. You know, we identify, decide, predict, and execute without execution, right? We do the movement. It's okay to go around this person slowly, and it's safe. The double yellow line tells us, hey, you're not supposed to cross the line. So that was the argument, was, well, I'm not supposed to cross the line. I'm not going to break the rule to save somebody. I'm not going to break the law to follow another law, because safe passing distance is three feet in the city of Boise, and then maybe Sandpoint, which isn't a whole lot, right? It kind of makes you feel uncomfortable at 50 miles an hour. Are you still teaching that in yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's great learning. We had a good conversation afterwards. I, was, I took two hours for that class. I had 40 minutes. And they let me keep on talking because it became this conversation with about 75 drivers and instructors that there's people in the cars with us, the students. And the messaging out there, like, this just affected me deeply. Deeply. I'm still a little burp clumped over it. So, remember that this is paint. And this is a human, and that's a human. The responsibility of drivers ahead on these little driveways and other places is to also look forward and look to the side and decide, is it safe for me to pull out? If you see this situation, are you going to pull out? Probably not, unless you're not paying attention. So just that scared me a lot. But again, Boise City Code. Passing distance does matter. <coughs> this was Kalamazoo, Michigan, this year. That's the impact of all the cyclists, bikes on the truck. Five people died. The guy lived and walked out of the vehicle. He was pretty high on drugs. Okay, uh, pretty significant. Age ranges from 71 down to 40. But a riding club just out. Pretty sad stuff. I'll move on. Okay. So I said I'd get to uh, stopping, signaling. We are cyclists and people who have broken blinkers are required to use your hand signals. This is your left, that's your right. I do this as a cyclist because a lot of people wave at me if I do this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, you know what, I'm going to the right. But I'll just do this, I'm like, yeah, thumbs up. I'm still going right. Or I use this one. Motorcycle drivers I also use this one as a right turn. And then stopping. <coughs> And if you see somebody doing something like this, what do you think that That's means? Slow. Or slowing or uh, if there's something ahead, there's something they want to warn you of that. Not very many people, you don't see that very often, <coughs> but it's a pretty significant uh, action.
Confusion reigns when we're riding with big packs of road cyclists. What I'm seeing is they're using the opposite hand to hand signal. You cannot see that. So we're trying to change that too. I wish I was really an officer of the law. Okay, those are your hand signals. We teach that to the students. We love to teach it to adults because they forget. Very significantly, stop is yield, also known as the Idaho stop law. Very confusing. If you've moved here from out of state, you're, if you knew anything about it, you thought, I don't have to stop at stop signs or stop lights as a bicyclist. That's what, what we're hearing from people who moved in. Talked to a lady from Boulder two days ago, said that to me. I don't have to stop. Yeah, you do. You still have to stop. Okay, stop is yield is a, a law from the 80s. It's in the legislature. It was legislated to allow bicyclists to come to a full stop at a red light, then proceed through if the way is clear. If you're not stealing the right of way from somebody else, you may proceed. You are not allowed to blow through a stop light or a stop sign. Stop signs are treated as a yield. You are required to stop if it's not your turn to go. But how many people do we see just blow right through a stop mm -hmm. sign right in front of us? Okay. Significant. You may already be there and the cyclist goes through. And it's creating hesitation now for drivers. And we're trying to get that as a question out there to educate everybody, especially incoming residents, especially new students. We're even teaching this to the younger grades now. Idaho stop law, we didn't used to teach it, but in uh, seventh through ninth grade, now we're teaching in fourth and fifth grade. These kids are out there doing these actions, they grow up with bad behavior, and their parents are like, let's not stop. Yeah. And then people come in from out of state and they're like, no, you don't have to stop for anything, but yes, you do. Please stop. Please stop. But there is a law about it. And then sidewalks, we all know about sidewalks. People should yield when we're dealing with electric scooters, electric anything on the sidewalks. If we're out there on the sidewalk doing our electric anything too, remember it's a sidewalk, not a side ride. Okay, please slow down. And it's okay to tell somebody to slow down. It truly it is. I learned a lesson a long time ago. It's okay if I carry the manual and I say, well, the law's on my side. Just so I got my little safety officer badge from my friends. <laughs> At least you put the manual down. I'm like, well, it's the manual. That's how we get along in life, right? We have a manual. If there's just a manual for everything in our life, you need a manual to fix the bus. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> or you have intrinsic knowledge. I mean, maybe you just understand how it works. But the truth is, we do need manuals, and they do serve us well. Uh, when it says no biking on the sidewalk, just you know, have people get off their bikes. Uh, I worry about little kids when we tell them no sidewalk riding. I really worry about the little kids. Does it pertain to little kids? I mean, little kids on bikes and little bikes should really shouldn't be off the road unless it's safe, right? I mean, we're all kind of hauled under there. Yeah. If you if we if we teach well from the beginning, it's true. If we teach well from the beginning, then we'll be doing okay. We've been in uh, doing eight years in Safe Routes to School in the Treasure Valley, two years in Kuna, so we're not far enough into Kuna yet to really make a huge difference, but we're starting to see a big difference in some of the Meridian schools that we've worked with for the last seven years. We're now seeing our students come into driver's ed. We're seeing a huge change. I remain hopeful. But, um, <laughs> there are days of hopelessness, I for sure remember that. Uh, our difficulty crossings. These are big roads out here. People do have to cross them. Mm, it's awful. But that, I want to remind us all, and we, you know, as a school bus driver, I watched it happen this morning. Everybody all of a sudden just jamming over to the left lane. And ah, uh, yeah, there's the school bus with the red lights on. You don't get to pass that. Remember there's six. Okay. And remember us as adults, too, when you're crossing the two or four lane roads, so remember to look all the directions. That first driver does stop, but the driver behind is like, oh, I'm late for pizza, and rolls around, and i got to go. I'm late for work, or I was on my cell phone, I didn't see you. <coughs> and the same thing, bicycles on sidewalks are allowed, unless it says not, but you are required to slow down and act as a pedestrian. You're under pedestrian rules on the sidewalk, so you're moving slower, yielding, 
And you don't have to get off your bike in the crosswalk unless the law says it's so, unless it's signed so, or if the law says it's so. You can move through there on the bicycle unless there's too many people. Um, skateboard, same thing. You may have a dismount zone. I don't know. Do you have a dismount zone in Cuny downtown? Do you know? Anybody walk there. around downtown Cuny? Sometimes. They don't have any <laughs> I know that's not true. I know it's not. I read a lot. But that's a, this is a really particular sidewalk law. Sidewalk law is very particular to cities, though. It's very particular to uh, individual districts. It's very Nampa downtown. A short walk section, no bikes on the sidewalk. So it's really particular to different areas in every kind of town. You know, they, uh, Coeur d'Alene on Sherman Avenue, no bicycles in the place where everybody would want to go. That's where all the stores are and the grocery and everything's on that and no bikes. Uh, finally, driveways, we know what kind of danger that represents. This is one that we show the kids. This is a staged slide. Uh, very uncomfortable, but uh, we remind them that the backup lights on all vehicles are white. They don't know this. Some adults don't know that. Okay, so remember that. It's all good, it's all good. So, with all the knowledge that you now possess, what's wrong? Oh, I didn't ever talk to you about what side of the bike, what side of the road do the bikes ride on? What? Same, Same side. Right. Yep, right side. Right side. I didn't talk about that. So, what's what's going on with these dudes? <laughs> They're actually from downtown Boise. See, these guys are probably from uh, they could be from Rigby, for all I know. <laughs> yeah. They're definitely riding the wrong way. Wrong way, yeah, wrong way. They're in a busy area and they're side by side. Side by side, busy area, yeah. It's a one way road as far as we could tell. Um, they don't have any helmets on, but we don't have a helmet law here in Boise or Kuna or Marcy or Potlatch or anywhere in Idaho. There's no helmet law. Okay? But uh, the helmet's only part of the, part of the equation. Okay? Uh, the one guy has one hand off the handlebar. That's actually okay. Two hands on the handlebars is like driving your car without any hands on the steering wheel. Okay, doesn't really work out so well. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. I knees, they always work. Uh, this though, the paint, again, I was talking about double lane paint. But this paint, where this shero is, if this person opened their door, is a cyclist paint. No, because it's actually painted too close to the vehicle. There are standards for all of these uh, paint markings. There are some places that don't follow that. They just put it down on the road. They don't understand. Uh, bicycling advocacy in Nampa just let me know that they got a call from the road department. How far should we put them out from the edge of curb? Hey, I read the manual. Yeah. I did. <laughs> uh, and it, it's uh, about 11 feet out. And that's not what this looks like. So remember that too. Sometimes paint is wrong. We get the wrong message. It doesn't keep us safe. Well, and just for a little bit. <laughs> when you retire, get your bus, turn that into a rad rig. That's pretty fun, huh? Yeah. So I do like to end on a smile. I just thought that was so funny. It probably blows out black and was pretty, pretty funny. Uh, so one side of the road, we ride on, we ride on the right. Do we need lights on our bikes at nighttime? Yes. Yeah. White on the front, red on the rear, just like any other vehicle. What is safe passing distance? Three feet at least. Four lane if you can. Three feet, that's three feet. Okay. Uh, can we bring wheels on the sidewalk? Yes. And the auto stop law. Stop signs is yield. Red lights is stop. About honking a horn when you're going to go around someone. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to think that it would work out. So, honking a horn when you're going around somebody is actually not legal uh, because it can scare them. And if the, if the rider or the person is also deaf, it doesn't do any good at all. The responsibility for all of us is to move around for the cyclist to be aware of what's going on around me in every direction. We get on our cruiser bikes on the green belt and we're all like, then the truth is you're going to have crash there just like anywhere else. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Bicyclists, let's say stop us 
look behind and say, okay, I've got the delay of three vehicles, which is state law, then to pull over. Oh, yeah, slow moving, yeah, that slow moving vehicles are required to, to pull over if there's three or more vehicles behind them. I don't know that. I would recommend picking up, I'm sorry I don't have a bunch of driver's manuals with me. I would recommend going online and looking at the online driver's manual or getting the, the actual physical copy of the driver's manual, refreshing your refreshing your driving law. Do you have rights out there for that? I would follow in a slow moving vehicle. You kept trying to wave me around. Yeah. And the double yellow line. And I was like, no, I can't. Yeah, sometimes the risk is just too great. Yeah. Thanks for being awesome, you guys. I'm headed to junior high. So, woo! <laughs> <laughs>